Welcome everyone. Uh, I'm Nick Hudson. I'm Minister at Woking Baptist Church. I'm also Chair of Churches Together in Woking, which is basically the town's churches worshipping and working together for our community. It's Good Friday when we remember a pivotal day in human history, the day on which Jesus of Nazareth was crucified on a Roman cross. We remember that day at a time when we ourselves are living through extraordinary days due to the coronavirus. Days when many are experiencing suffering and grief, isolation and for some sadly death. While we live through this pandemic, we are also conscious of the suffering of millions around the world due to poverty, conflict and injustice. So this is an important day because on it we focus our thoughts on Jesus who experienced all of those things himself. Poverty, conflict, injustice, and supremely in his last days, suffering, grief, isolation and death. As Christians, we believe he suffered with us and for us, and that he did so as an act of selfless love. We believe he suffered with us, identifying with our brokenness and suffering in his brokenness and suffering. And we believe he suffered for us, for our forgiveness and our salvation. We believe his death and then his rising again to new life at Easter give us hope, not just for ourselves, but for this whole broken world in which we live, that we and it might one day be renewed and restored. In the Bible readings, dramas, music and prayers that follow, we'll explore the events of that first Good Friday, most particularly through the eyes of two women called Mary. First Mary, the mother of Jesus, then Mary Magdalene, a woman with a reputation who found total acceptance in Jesus. And then in the third and final monologue, we hear Mary, his mother, once again at the cross. We begin though with the words of Isaiah the prophet, written around 600 years before Jesus, but words which speak hauntingly into what happened to him that day. Isaiah chapter 53. Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind. A man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Yes, my love, I'm making bread again. We're back in Jerusalem for Passover. You are here too, somewhere with your friends. You will have Passover with them, I think. You'll be missed here, by me anyway. Oh, but I do love Passover, and I love making bread. It takes time, and I love that. It takes energy and effort, and I love that too. It reminds me of a time when I had some control, before I had to let you go. When you were little, you used to watch me as I worked. 
I would be kneading the dough, and you would talk of many things, normal boy stuff as well as higher spiritual things. Yes, the human and the divine were both there, right before my eyes, even then. And then when you were grown up, you would work away at a table or a chair as I worked away at the bread, and still we would talk about good and bad, your growing desire to serve. You couldn't hide your excitement when you knew your time was coming. And then, when your dear father died, we would talk away our grief. You were such a comfort to me then. So now I still talk to you as I make the bread. Foolishly, perhaps, I imagine you listening somewhere. I don't see you much now. You have such a lot to do. And I wonder if you ever think of home. If you ever think of me making bread. You did say once that when you were out in the wilderness looking at the rocks around you and feeling that ache in your stomach, all you could think about was my bread. I wonder, did you think of me when you took those five loaves into your hands on that mountainside full of hungry people? Do you have time to think of me at all? Maybe not. But I'm still your mother. And if you were here now, I'd tell you to be careful. I'd tell you to watch out for those people, powerful people, who resent you and the attention you're getting. They want to harm you, I'm sure of it. Be careful, my love. Oh, that's not all I'd say, though. I'd tell you how proud I was, too. Proud of the man that you are. A man who can resist the devil with a word of scripture. A man who offers comfort and healing with a touch or a word. A man who can feed a multitude just by breaking bread. There. This is ready, I think, and I'm ready too. Tonight there will be no need for you to increase the food supply or turn water into wine. It's your presence I will miss, not your miracles. The Crucifixion of Jesus As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink, mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots, and sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed a written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. In the same way, the rebels who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. Many women were there, watching from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee to care for his needs. Among them was Mary Magdalene. I would have followed him anywhere, this man of God who gave me a second chance. 
I was out of control when he found me. Something had taken hold of my head and I couldn't do anything about it. I had no peace, I couldn't function. The words that came from my lips were evil and wild and I couldn't control them. There was no point to my existence, I just wanted to go to sleep and not wake up. I can't remember what I was saying when I ran into Jesus, but I know it was bad. I don't know how he healed me, but I do remember one thing. He said my name, Mary. And that was all that was needed because I felt the demons leave me. My head was clear. The tension flowed from my body. At last I could rest. I could think. I wanted to live again. I wanted to follow him, to go everywhere he went. What an adventure that was. I did love him so. I truly believed he was the son of God, the one we'd been waiting for. How else could he do what he did? So many lives transformed, just like mine. But now, everything's changed. The crowds that used to follow him are now screaming for his death. His disciples have fled. Only John is here, supporting his mother who weeps on his shoulder. It's really happening. They are murdering my lord and there's nothing I can do about it.
Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. I could never have imagined this, standing here in this place, helpless. I want to run, but I can't move. I'm supposed to protect you but I can't even get near you. I can only watch like everyone else. Look what they've done to you. My boy hung up like meat, covered in blood and flies, laughed at, shouted at, in such unbearable pain. Oh God, how can you allow this? Please stop it. If you're not going to save him, please just end this now. I can't take my eyes off you. Woman, behold your son, you said. I behold you, my son. My beautiful, perfect son. My dying son. Oh, it's getting so dark. <gasps> there it is. Your last cry. Your last breath. It's over, my love. It's over. prayer for Good Friday. Loving God, today in remembrance and awe, we tread again the holy ground of the cross of Christ. This place of isolation is crowded with onlookers. This place of suffering has become the source of our healing. This place of violence has become our peace. This place of death is now the gateway to eternal life. Loving God, even now, even here, we see how deep is your love for us and for your world. Have mercy upon us. 
forgive us our sins, heal and restore this broken world for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, but who rose again victorious, giving us hope. In his name we pray. Amen. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Love demands my